one plus one plus one equals three. Welcome to our very Oh my man yeah. here. Oh my yeah. yeah. Oh my yay. Who Fight Club that? captain in the building. Oh, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on. This is the second member of the Bull Maillet Fight Club joining us in back-to-back -back week. Right down below, there he is, the muscle of the group, Mr. Thomas. Manager of 5150, and we are so honored that you've decided to join us here. He is Mr. Bud Heavy. How the hell are you doing, sir? I'm living the dream, man. How about you guys? So, you mean all 360 keep your face? I'll make it look pretty, but I'll spit it first. That's who I am, so... The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note... Please note... like that it's thursday night and yeah it means it's party time people we're the video bros i'm bobby munson that man beside me the man with the angelic voice papa smokes papa smokes how you doing sir that was a particularly awesome intro munson i'm doing great a shout out to all my wrestling people out there and a shout out to mlw we're gonna do a little review here we sure are, but before we do, let's get down to business a little bit first because, again, we got to get them bills paid, and that's Rogue Energy right down below. You'll see right below Pop Smokes the QR code that you can scan for your opportunity to head on over to RogueEnergy.com, or you can follow that cool little ticker at the bottom of your screen, RogueEnergy.com. Use that promo code OLEPOTS for 10% off your order. What is Rogue Energy, you ask? Well, good damn question. Rogue Energy is an alternative to the everyday average energy drink that you'll find in the stores if you're looking for a zero sugar, low calorie, vegan friendly alternative that you want to head over to see our friends at RogueEnergy.com. Remember that promo code O-L-E pods. And I've got that energy rocking and rolling here tonight. We got friends in the house. We got Bell Ball Collins joining us saying, gentlemen, I, I'm getting so used to that. It's starting to wear on me, Pop Smokes. I'm loving it. And we got Bastard 69, our man yeah. coming in, giving us the O-L-E Moat there, beautiful, my man. Thanks for joining us. In. And again, joining us in back-to-back -back weeks and really being a new supporter of the show, B. Carter, thank you for coming back. As always, let's get in on the conversation here. But Bob Smokes, before we talk about the Fusion episode that we just watched it, it was a Fusion episode. That's for damn sure. Let's talk a little bit about the news. So we got all the news that MLW has got new programming coming out. They have struck a deal with Reels, a television network, they're going to be bringing a new show, MLW Underground, coming up in February. And I've been searching, Papa Smokes, and I've come to the conclusion 
MLW Underground might not exactly be accessible to us here in Canada or anywhere outside of the United States. So I'm confused about how we're going to go about finding this and delivering the goods each and every week as we welcome in Etty Wuji coming in. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us week after week. Love and support. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. But definitely confused about what's going to happen here, Bob Smokes, whether we're going to be able to find copies or find some way you know, to convince MLW to let us in on some of this. Let us see what you got going on because we want to keep supporting you guys. We want to keep doing the show uh, like we do each and every week. So your thoughts, Papa Smokes, MLW Underground. Yeah, first of all, WTF, what the hell's going on here? And uh, it's it's, uh, it's heartbreak to me that uh, they might leave us Canadian viewers out in the cold, so to speak, in the middle of winter. And... Um, I'm not mad at the company. It's a good deal. I, it sounds like uh, Reels is going to be uh, put their product on a lot more screens, and I'm all for that. But God damn it, man! Just this, this some of these things that you want that just aren't available in Canada. Now, what are we supposed to do about this? I, I don't know. There are other ways of going about stuff, but I'd rather do it legitimately if we're going to do a review online and stuff. And uh, yeah, it puts us in a bit of a spot, but uh, we'll have to find something to do. Yeah. So B Carter asking reels isn't on Amazon in Canada. I cannot find it on there. In fact, I did some research and I'm pretty certain what I've come across is that it is one of the add on channels only available in the U S. So I guess you'd have to do some, fine digging in order to find a copy of MLW Underground for the time being. But in the meantime and in between time, if any of our American friends want to sit in a stream yard room with us on a Tuesday night to share their screen, I mean, by all means, we can, we can make this kind of thing happen. You know, we're just, just saying, but we'll find a way to find out what's going on in the world of MLW as always, so that we can continue to bring this, but we're actually going to keep bringing you guys that much more fun and excitement on Thursday nights because we have been doing Ring Respect Radio now for about six years. And again, we don't want to leave it high and dry. So what we're going to do is bring back the doubleheader Thursday nights. You're going to get both a half of the show dedicated to Fusion, all the MLW talk, what happened on MLW Fusion each week, as well as news coming out of MLW Underground, whatever we could dig up. And then in the second half, we're going to be picking topics, whether it be retro matches to watch, retro topics whether it be some sort of current event or an independent wrestling hey maybe every once in a while we'll do a watch along with some of our prairie pro wrestling matches on a thursday night with you guys as well too we're gonna kick it up a notch and give you a little bit more action a little bit more excitement a little bit more party time each and every thursday night because guess what we have a fucking great time hanging out with you guys on thursday nights shocking language munson but absolutely fitting as well this is, uh, I love the new format idea. Let's shake up the fishbowl a little bit and see what happens. And uh, yeah, like you say, always a party. Hey, cheers to that, Munson. And let's yes. have some fun on Thursday nights as we always do and talk some wrestling. All right. Well, let's get down to the talk because, again, we had a very long episode of MLW Fusion. I didn't know what to expect. This is the first time in a while they haven't alluded to any matchups and had us go disappointed when said matchups don't happen tonight. We got matchups. <laughs> we got a few matchups. None of them were told to us ahead of time. All of them made an impact here. This was a solid episode of MLW Fusion. I liked this episode quite a bit. We start the night off. Cesar Duran coming to the top of the ramp. He comes out to give a speech. He says, my renegades, my amigos, my unsociable neck beard society. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> that was a cool line. That was good on the part of Cesar. That hurt Munson. I think he was talking to us there. <laughs> well, you know what? We are what we are. We accept it. It's all good. <laughs> but he says that he's going to be bringing a gift to MLW. He has signed himself a champion, the nastiest fighter in all of Mexico. This is going to be a big deal. And MLW, if they want to use this guy, they're going to have to pay Cesar Duran a lot of money, and they're going to be using him here tonight. We get Sam Adonis aligning himself with Cesar Duran and making his debut. This is going to be my first look in on Sam Adonis that I'm aware of, have heard the name, have heard him making a splash, been excited to see this, and he gets a nice, beautiful-looking intro. Good-looking, man. Like, he comes out there looking like a solid dude. Uh, they say he's a luchador, but he stands at 6'4", 230 pounds. Like, this is not your average luchador. Yeah, I was impressed by this debut a whole bunch. Um 
I was telling you before that uh, I followed Sam Adonis on Twitter a year or two ago because I thought some of his tweets were cool. This is a old school guy who kind of values still kayfabe, likes to keep it real for the fans, likes to do things the old fashioned way, which sounds funny to say now he's doing it the way of the seventies and eighties, but I guess that's old fashioned in wrestling uh, timelines now. But at any rate, he looks cool. He looks awesome. Big guy, cool gimmick has all kinds of uh, flashy ring wear and his, and his uh, bleached blonde hair and everything. He's got a body, he's got size and uh, coming out with Cesar Duran, you can see that this is a guy that's going to get pushed probably at this point, kind of in the middle of the card type area, but um, looking real good. And then we got a match from him too. We did. And yeah, as uh, B Carter coming in, he was the real deal. 100% agree. And we got to see that inside that ring. Uh, did you catch the name of the poor bastard that had to go up against Sam Adonis in this one, Bob Smokes? Well, let's consult my notes here. I have written job guy, Johnny Blank. So that that's as far as I got. It was Johnny somebody or other, but uh, there wasn't much priority put on his name in this match not at all poor johnny blank getting in there and getting uh the floor mopped with him sam adonis looks fantastic inside that yeah. ring and again he would go on into his interview with sam laterna afterward and state exactly what we just saw he isn't about the flash he isn't flipping around like an idiot or anything of the sort he is out there to hurt people and hurt johnny blank he did in this matchup yeah absolutely and uh this was a perfect way to debut a brand new heel is that you bring him in uh, with a, a awesome introduction from an established person in the company, uh, high up in the company, Cesar Duran, who's now looks like he's going to be doing some rig side managing as well. So you have him bring him in like he's a big deal, give him a, a match against a job guy, make him look dominant. Doesn't have to be a squash match, but let the fans see his stuff unabated without him getting uh, beaten by his opponent or by without him having to suffer any offense the other way. Just have him show his stuff in the ring so the fans can all get a good look at him. That's what we got here. This is the perfect kind of debut. It, it splashes Adonis into the company, makes him look like a million bucks. Yeah, and again, afterwards, what else made him look like a million bucks is that interview with Sam Laterna at the top of the ramp. Like I mentioned before, he said he's not flashy, he's not there to do the flips, he's not there to look like an idiot, he's there to hurt people. And again, you you alluded to the final uh, words within this particular interview, in particular, Papa Spokes, I'll let you uh, take this one out, uh, let everybody know what uh, Sam Adonis dropped on us. Well, yeah, he. Uh, I, was, I recognized the little phrases there. He said... Uh, questions are a burden and answers a prison for oneself and any uh classic heavy metal fans will recognize that as an iron maiden lyric it took me a second to rem remember what song it was but i had all that stuff memorized when i was a young teenager and stuff so it, it came back for sure nice use of it it sounded perfect there Papa Smokes was rocking out in his room to some bruce dickinson given the sign of 666 the number hell of the yeah beast. <laughs> hell yeah it must have been a good rocking time. But, yeah, what a great way to kick off Fusion here. Uh, but what better way to kick up the energy on Fusion than a backstage segment with Boomaye, Boomaye, Boomaye. It's Alex Kane, and it's backed up by Mr. Thomas. Again, unfortunately, news broke recently. Byron Reed no longer with MLW. He is now a free agent. Uh, so, again, we won't be seeing him within those pro promos. Uh, Alex Kane stating, the, the Bulldogs, he wants to take them out back behind the shed and finally put them to rest. And then he's going to rename the Opera Cup the Oprah Cup to just further add insult to injury when it comes to the things that he's done. And just... <laughs> <laughs> baby, baby Smokes, that, that, that's, that would have been an interesting character. That's right. I wasn't a baby then, but I probably <laughs> just had the little uh, grade 8 mustache going on at that time. <laughs> that's that's classy right there <laughs> but the, but the it, smoke but the soap smoke's name still stuck though right of course oh, of yeah. course <laughs> but um uh, this was another awesome promo by alex kane he's so good he goes in different directions every time he's always got a new joke 
he's hilarious and and i love mr thomas in the background too we had such a good time interviewing both those guys that i just love seeing their stuff now and and kane continues to hit it out of the park on the mic and uh and he's got mockery he's got belittlement for his opponents and everything and uh uh he 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 gave it up for the uh for the opera cup he's he's making a mockery of it now too and uh, that's not going to go over well with some of the other people uh on the other side in mlw not at all and, and after he mentions about renaming the opera cup the oprah cup he then says he's going to go on to win the next battle riot of the mlw go on to then take on the champion uh, alluding to that still being alexander hammerstone at that point in time and he's going to have his foot on hammer's chest hold it up the MLW championship belt. I don't doubt Alex game when he makes comments like this. Well, and it's interesting too, because for someone who just held the uh, national open weight championship recently, he's not interested in getting that back. He's got his eyes on the big prize. So this is, this is interesting that they uh, have Alex Kane saying this now. It does this signal that he will make a push to the top part of the card and into the, the major championship picture kind of looks like it yeah and it's good because you know what he is that damn good but right after this segment was done they went to an outside it was uh david Boy smith jr and the billington bulldogs bo arriving at the arena that day they go right up to him to mention to them about the renaming alex gade saying that he's going to rename the opera cup the oprah cup and you could see the camera had to get closer to david Boy smith jr because the less experienced billington bulldogs there they were having a good little chuckle at the name of the Oprah Cup that was dropped. So, so was Davy Boy too, but he couldn't get away from the uh, camera. So that was a pretty good part. But it just that also shows you how funny Kane is about stuff like that, and uh, he makes good jokes. And uh, then, yeah, with this, uh, they they do those kind of uh, candid interviews with uh, wrestlers as they're getting in their cars and stuff. And this was another one of those, and. Uh, uh, the Bulldogs certainly weren't going to speak, but you knew that Davy Boy Jr. was going to have to do the talking. And sometimes he's a little clunky on the mic, but uh, kind of uh, uh, proving us wrong this time, overachieving a little bit, starting out cool and then warming up at the end to to pretty hot. Eh? Did, did you think that was good also? Yeah, he delivered well at the end because, again, I was kind of mentioning at first, it's like, you know, I don't get overly excited when they give uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. an opportunity to speak. I'd rather watch him wrestle. I think that does enough for, for his talking. Um, but this was different. At first, again, like you said, a little clunky, wasn't quite sure where it was going to go. But once he picked up that emotion about his family lineage and how this is insulting to his family lineage, and that he's not just going to get in the ring and wrestle Alex Kane, he's going to hurt. Alex Kane. He's going to fight Alex Kane. And that's the kind of passion you like to see out of somebody because this isn't about titles. This is about, uh, you know, family history, about family respect. And he respects the lineage that was built up for him. He respects the Opera Cup and he doesn't like what Kane's been doing. This is done beautifully. This was one of the stronger promos I've definitely seen from Davey Boy Smith Jr. I was not, I was definitely impressed, more impressed than I was expecting to be with this. For sure. And this is like a perfect angle too, because they're getting a lot of mileage out of this. For one thing, Kane's got heat with Davey Richards, the last Opera Cup winner, because he never got to have his cup or pose with it or anything like that. And and then now he's also got heat with Davey Boy Smith because of, like you said, the family kind of issue where that cup was, was Stu Hart's property and, uh, kind of on loan to uh, MLW for their uh, Opera Cup series. And uh, Kane just, you know, uh, kind of insulting that heritage a little bit by not only stealing the cup, but now it's dented. And he's got it renamed to whatever he thinks is hilarious. And uh, it's good, man. It's a, it's a angle as old as time in wrestling. You insulted my family. I'm going to get you for that. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that no exactly and that's why this is working out beautifully and why they can keep this one going i know that if we pay attention to what's going on in terms of what they've announced for upcoming matches that they have already announced that there will be a one-on-one -on -one match up with alex kane and davy boy 
I'm praying that by this time we'll be able to get copies of uh, Underground to be able to watch that one, or else it happens to be on Fusion. That would be even sweeter. Come on, MLW, come through with us for us on this one. We want to see our boy Alex Kane uh, get in there again against a, you know a fellow Canadian. That's what makes this really difficult because it's like you know, what you want to root for a fellow Canadian at the same time. Alex Kane's such a cool dude and came on our show that I, I can't help but want to vote for the guy who you know was right here with us at one point for sure. And we shared a joke with, uh, or a couple of jokes with Mr. Thomas about Canada the, too. And then two weeks ago on the show, they were joking around and Mr. Thomas brought up Canada uh, in their promo segment. <laughs> I don't like I, I... coincidences months. And this is, this all means something. And, uh, we we got to find a way and, uh, maybe the boys can help us or something, but, uh, we got to find a way. We will find a way. We sure will. And we're going to be able to find that out hopefully soon. And again, we're going to go over to the chat here as my damn cat can't leave me alone. Uh, B. Carter, since they call it the featherweight title, would one of the belly tits be eligible to fight Tyathori? You know what? She's got she's got more muscle on her than those boys do so far. Like, I mean, again... Hoping the best for the Billingtons because, again, the, you know, with time, they'll grow into the size and stuff like that. They'll pick up on things. Um, you know, they're learning. They're, they're getting there. But, again, it's, you know, we're seeing the infancy of their time in professional wrestling. And uh, I'm American, but I'm all for the Canadian. Yeah, well, hey, you know, rock and roll, we're, we're happy. Honorary Canadian right there, B. Carter. We're making you an honorary Canadian. In fact, we can do that. Officially, as Western Canadians, we can dub anybody an honorary Canadian that we want to. Sorry, well, he, at East. He's got to have a toque then. Well, yeah, of course. That, that, that's just a given. And and if you happen to have a Tim Horton somewhere down there, you grab yourself a Tim's coffee, make sure to put some whiskey in it. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't condone any kind of actions like that. Not on this show. This is a polite family level show here on a Thursday night, Bob Smoke. And I've just, seen you, know, you on I've seen you on your <laughs> Sunday lunchtime show. Uh, I think you might be doing a little bit of that Horton's uh, whiskey combo, maybe. Yeah, well, maybe every once in a while, and they do in Michigan. That's oh, right. Michigan, All right, yeah. beautiful Michigan. Go Michigan! Uh, awesome. But uh, speaking of, you know, outside of Canada, <laughs> we also went outside of the U.S. on the next match here player <clears> on the card too. Uh, we went overseas, in fact, all the way over to Japan where they aired a matchup that took place at Dragon Gate in Japan. This match was for the, oh, oh, hold on here. I wrote it down so I don't forget. The Over the Dream Gate Championship. And I I thought that was a very different name. It's going to be Yamato versus Shun Skywalker, the champion. And we've seen Shun a couple times over in MLW so far. We were both impressed by him. Uh, our first look into Yamato here. But we were, we, we were so, as silent as the crowds in Japan are at times showing the respect, watching this, and just taking in the aura of all the traditions and stuff like this. This felt like a main event title fight as it came out, and that belt, wow. That, that belt is very, very unique looking. I like the tradition with the key, the challenger key that comes off, that's presented to get a shot at the championship. This is a beautiful tradition, and I liked this placement on this episode of MLW Fusion, and both these guys kicked some serious ass here tonight. Yeah, it was an awesome segment, and, and I enjoyed the match. This was the bulk of the show by a long shot. This was, uh, let me consult here again, 22-minute segment. So uh, that's like a huge chunk of a one-hour show, including uh, commercials and all that stuff. So, uh, But I, I like the way they did it. This Dragon Gate, we were talking while we watched it, this Dragon Gate is very excellent in its appearance and its uh, presentation. They have good production value. The The venue it was in seemed very huge, but the fans were very quiet. You were also saying you, you could see people uh, uh, distanced in their seating and also yeah. with a lot of masks on. So i don't not sure how many people were there, but it was a giant cavernous building. And uh, yeah, they, they dedicated a lot of time to this segment. Uh, when that Yamoto came out the first time, He's got a huge, long ramp to walk down to the ring. Halfway to the to the ring, he just lays down on his back and is just laying in the middle of the ramp. It's a I'm long thinking, walk. Uh, okay, uh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, and then, yeah, he just laid there for 
a minute and a half or something. And then he just got up, kept walking to the ring. So I don't know what that means in terms of an entrance, but uh, it also showed that they were in no hurry to get to the ring. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, could say it better myself. For sure. But they obviously <laughs> didn't care about that. And I thought it was cool in the whole presentation of the thing because it they have a little bit of ceremony before the matches, which I've always liked about a lot of those uh, Japanese cards, including the key and the belt. That's kind of a neat, uh, innovative thing to do. And uh, lots of pictures, lots of historical uh, stuff, handshakes and uh, everything going on before. Each uh, wrestler, uh, once Skywalker came out, has a corner, like a corner men, so to speak. But I'm not talking like they're cronies, like in North American wrestling, guys in their wrestling gimmicks coming up. These are guys all with the same color T-shirts, like like a manager and a cut man and in boxing, you know, like you have yeah. a, a little posse behind you that help you with your stuff. One guy sticks the stool underneath in between rounds one guy wipes the sweat off you know it was that kind of corner man so again that gives it the look of like a title fight kind of thing and uh man it must have been it was eight or nine minutes before the match even started with both those entrances and all the splendor and everything and then the uh the uh rituals and uh and stuff before the match begins and so yeah they wanted to show stardom in, a, in all its glory and I like this kind of thing because it's different and uh, the Japanese do things just a little bit differently than us. And, and I like it because it's a cool change. Even that ring looked cool and the ringside area was very nicely laid out and uh, the camera shots looked good and everything. So this, uh, my first impression of uh, watching stardom stuff was definitely positive. Yeah. And uh, you know, like they could have honestly called this as the main event and left the rest of the stuff for next week for all all it was worth i mean this did go a long time this took up a good chunk of the time like b carter saying a little editing goes a long way and i, I will say yeah it was our first look into dragon gate very interested to check it out more but if anyone wants to find out more about japanese wrestling as you saw melball collins in the chat earlier her and her tag team partner in crime andre are always doing the watch alongs doing the reviews of all things japanese wrestling whether it be dragon gate stardom new japan they've got you covered they know the ups and ups when it comes to japanese wrestling so if you have any questions definitely reach out to them and check out their work as well too but yeah i would love to check out more from them again yamoto picking up a big victory getting to be the new champion crowned the new Dream Gate champion, uh, sorry, the Open Dream Gate champion. I got to check my note again there. Over the Dream Gate champion. Sorry about that. There we go. Over the Dream Gate champion. Very unique name for that title and a very unique belt. But Yamoto picking up the victory here tonight and becoming the new champion. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, outside of this maybe being the main event or maybe, you know, not having all of the content in there. Yeah, it was great. I mean, the matchup was solid. These two guys are solid. This looked nice. Presentation was nice. I still going to give it a total pass because, again, with some of the stuff we've been getting delivered over the last few weeks here, this fusion didn't feel as long as it actually was. This one felt like it went by quite quickly because I was entertained throughout the entire time. Yeah, you could tell that something's changed in the last um... – month or two with fusion in terms of the editing and the way the show is laid out and stuff uh it just seems like there's different people working on it or different producers or uh, directors but um uh this was one of those episodes that they just filled up with wrestling it was is pretty much all wrestling there were a couple of uh, awesome promo segments and all that but uh, i always like it when they just instead of having two matches and a bunch of other segments, they have like three matches. And this was even uh, one short match and two decently long matches. So not yeah. too bad. This is one of the episodes I like because there's lots of in-ring action. Yeah, we're going to get to the main event of that in-ring reaction. But before we do, there was a couple of more pieces. And one of those pieces is a little bit more of a heartfelt piece. Uh, they took us to go and see Richard Holiday. They showed all his time with MLW with the Dynasty. Uh, saying he's the longest tenured MLW wrestler get, dating back to 2018. So a long time, the holiday has been working within MLW. And this wasn't most marketable Richard Holiday that we got here. This was shooting from the hip, true to form, being himself Richard Holiday. 
going out there, uh, letting us know about the update with his health. Because again, back in September, he was diagnosed with uh, Hodgson's lymphoma, uh, which is a form of cancer. But he says he's positive and the doctors have been shocked by the way he's been handling things. He is in the gym five to six days per week training already. He is kicking the shit out of chemo and kicking the crap out of cancer. Like he's, he's mopping the floor with it by the sounds of it and staying positive. It, it was hard to see holiday like this, but it was, it was nice because you got to connect with the real person. You know, that once he beats the hell out of this, that he is going to come back and be bigger than ever before, because there will not be a person in the world of professional wrestling that hasn't got their eyes on Richard holiday upon his return. Yeah, that was well said because uh, I, I've been wondering how Richard was doing. It was it was just uh, a huge shock, as he said. It was a huge shock for him. It was a huge shock for all of us too. A, a young, uh, healthy, in shape guy like that to come down with a, a, a form of cancer that can be quite serious and all that too. But uh, as all forms of cancer are, but. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't realize how long, how far along in his treatments he was too, because he said he was diagnosed in uh, 20, uh, 2022 September, right? And uh, yeah. so he's already finished his uh, initial or, or total rounds of chemotherapy and uh, he looked just fine in this video. Uh, he, he, of course, wasn't in his wrestler persona. He was just in, in his own kind of guys and... Uh, he uh yeah he spoke from the heart and he's a very eloquent guy and uh it was very nice to hear from him. he sounds very positive it sounds like he's doing so good so i'm just very happy about that if he actually got to return to wrestling that would be wonderful and uh by the sound of uh you know his spirit is strong so he, uh it sounds like we probably will see him in the future and i can't wait for that because he's a he's a special talent he really is. And again, we're going to take this one moment before we move on just to say, Richard Holiday, all the best, all the prayers in the world, get better, beat this cancer and come back better than ever from the video bros and everybody watching. Cheers, brother. Come back soon. Yeah, brother. Well, moving on from there, Papa Smokes, uh, we had a little backstage segment, uh, which is setting up a match from next week. I didn't quite catch both sides of the coin here in this one. I believe that the Microman is going to be teaming with Lindsay Dorado against Delirious. And is he with Adonis or is it somebody else next week? Yeah, I think it was Delirious and Adonis, but don't okay. quote me on that. Yeah, so that'll be an interesting one. And I, I mean, it would make sense based on the segment that we saw Microman backstage. Cesar Duran enters with Sam Adonis. Uh, he takes a trash can, dumps the trash over uh, poor Microman's head and dumps the trash can right over top of him. Had a good little chuckle at this one, of course. And then Lindsay Dorado coming in, uh, trying to ask what the hell's going on. Why are you guys doing this? Uh, that at that point in time, Cesar Duran tries to give his pitch to Lindsay Dorado to join him. He wants champions. He wants to get Lindsay on board. Lindsay seems very uninterested and walked away with Microman. Yeah, so uh, uh, again, a, a simple and classic angle to set up the match. The new guy in town thinks he's a tough guy and a bully, so he dumps the garbage over uh, Microman's head. And as we've seen, Microman's got all kinds of friends backstage, so uh, this time Lindsay Dorado quick to uh, leap to his defense. And uh, just just a small angle enough to set up a match for next episode, a nice tag team match, and uh, we'll see what happens. They're going to go for an angle with uh, Microman. We'll see how this goes. We'll find out that next week. So when you guys join us for that double header next week, we'll have all the information on how that match went down. It's going to be good to see. But hey, we had to come to an end eventually. And by end, I mean it's time for the main event of the evening. This match is scheduled for one fall. One fall. And it is for the MLW World Featherweight Championship. <laughs> so here we got Taya Valkyrie defending against Trisha Dora. Finally, the match that was advertised, I believe, for last week and pulled out from under us happens this week in our main event. Again, I was kind of shocked. Uh, you kept mentioning and yes, we got B. Carter. One fall. You bet one fall indeed. Uh, but just, uh, you know, 
we kind of you throwing it out there, Pop Spokes, that you figured maybe there would be an attack. Tr- Trish would get attacked by Taya coming down to the ring, which would cut this thing short. But that wasn't the case. We did get OT. The women got to take the OT spot, giving them about, I'd say, about a good 10, 12 minutes. I know that the middle match did yeah. take a look, quite a bit more. But they gave them some time. They got to work. Both these ladies worked well, very well. In fact, the mat wrestling that they did off the hop, that was a nice touch right to start things off, uh, getting a feel for each other back and forth. And then they started laying in their spots. And this one got really solid. This was one of the stronger featherweight championship matches that has been presented on MLW TV so far. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I have to say when uh, the announcements or the uh, introductions were being made when there was two minutes to the end of the show, I was kind of suspecting, oh, Jesus, we're not going to get this match here. It's going to be some kind of a an attack that uh, where the match has to be canceled or something. I wasn't sure what's going to happen, but, of course, that's nice that they went overtime for this and give that featherweights division some time, give it a main event. That's good because uh, we need to get it rolling. It's been kind of just barely hanging in there for a bit, but now that we got Taya Valkyrie, a, a, a very... A fitting champion and uh, a good challenger in this case to Trisha Dora. Like we we've talked about her uh, in her match last week. Neither of us had watched too much of her stuff, but I, I knew that she'd been all around the country and all around North America on the Indies and stuff. So I mean, you know, she's getting some reps in with some different wrestlers, and she came in here with some nice offense and some nice uh, selling with uh, Taya Valkyrie as well. And again. Also world travel because the commentary letting us know that she is a former U.S. soldier. Uh, served in Afghanistan eight years at serving her country. So again, wonderful human being for doing what she did, putting her life on the line like that for her country and going out there and doing her thing. And now she's come around. She is a very solid wrestler. She gets in there. She does her thing. Gave Taya a nice matchup here. This is a reason why you would put this matchup on last is because you want to present the ladies, when they have a solid matchup like this, a championship to put on the line like this, it really makes that featherweight championship look solid. And again, tire retaining, but this time with a little assistance from Cesar Duran. Uh, so they are really going for making this thing strong. They're making that MLW featherweight championship very strong. Uh, Taya, we know, was a big name in the first place to put that belt around, but they really are presenting her as a fighting champion, someone who's going out there, taking on all opponents, doesn't matter what part of the world they come from, and really just putting her out on display as their champion in the face of MLW. Well, and, and all cheers to that, too, because uh, we talked about the featherweights division having uh, problems at the beginning. I, I just think they weren't able to book enough properly good talent to get it going at the beginning. They had Hall of Dead and a few other good lady wrestlers, but uh, couldn't <clears throat> couldn't quite dig the back tires in to get it going. And now with Taya Valkyrie having made uh, uh, obviously a certain form of commitment to the MLW. They can keep her in that championship role. She's legit. She's got experience in uh, major companies and all around the Indies, including Mexico. So uh, you've got somebody that's legit there. Let her hold the belt and then feed her a steady stream of all the other um, female talent you can get, and including um, some of the luchadoras that come in too, such as Lady Flammer and the others that we saw before. That, that got a good match out of uh, Taya Valkyrie as well. So that's good. Keep it up. Uh, keep up the good work. And let's let's get this ladies division going. Yeah, and again, uh, the comment uh, from B. Carter here, Taya's husband and coming to MLW. Yes, again, uh, Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Fusion, whatever he is. He's Johnny Fusion when he comes to MLW. Apparently, it might be Johnny Underground by the time he actually drops on uh, MLW yeah. by the sounds of it, but uh, yes, he's going to be coming to MLW here coming up, and uh, it's going to be in a big way and a big big signing for the company. I mean, we both have mentioned it before. Big fans of uh, John Hennigan. He's a he's a great talent for them to obtain. Yeah, and didn't they announce who his match is against already? To his first match. Um, I'm yes, trying to think. I... Damn, it slipped my mind. B. Carter, help us out. I know you know. Tell, tell us you you you've got to have the the goods on that one who's uh who's johnny wrestling going up johnny it wrestling. might be davy richards 
Yeah, it might you know be what? Davy Richards, but I forget. That might not. But be at any rate, off. at any rate, he's kind of like Ty of Valkyrie is for ladies division too. He's established. He's a name. He's a face that all the fans recognize from having seen, having been seeing him on TV for years before that for the, for the big companies. And then since he hasn't in the big, been in the big companies, he hits all the major indies as well and goes through because once again, everybody already recognizes him, recognizes him and knows who he is. So the, ah, right there, Willie Mac. Thank yeah. you very much. I knew That's it was awesome. a, I knew it was a good match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be great. Oh yeah, I can't go wrong there. Willie Mac's fantastic, and you know that uh, Johnny Fusion's gonna bring bring it in that matchup. I can't I can't wait. Again, unfortunately, it might mean that we're searching for it because this is this sounds like a matchup that's gonna be landed on Underground versus landed on Fusion in the near future. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to keep the search going, but uh, if they keep making these hot matches, we will have to. Uh, be like an Easter egg hunt, kind of. Yeah, you bet it will be. But hey, you know what, Pop Smokes? We had a great time watching Fusion tonight. It was a great lineup. I just want to give a quick plug to Prairie Pro Wrestling, where you can catch Pop Smokes and I every Saturday. Call in the matchups on YouTube. Uh, go check out Prairie Pro Wrestling on YouTube. Click subscribe. And we've got a big show coming up in Saskatoon, February the 18th. Prairie Pro Wrestling presents Love is Dead, the big main event. It's going to be El Asesino and the champ, Sheik Akbar Shabazz, taking on Colton Kelly, Cannonball Kelly, the Kelly brothers, the Kelly cousins, the Kellys, something along those lines. But the two Kellys have an opportunity. If they pin the champion in this matchup, they will then become, whoever does it, will become the new number one contender for the Prairie Pro Wrestling Championship. I'm looking forward to it. Again, if you're going to be in Saskatoon, make sure to get your tickets. Be there in a live capacity. It will sell out. It always does. We packed that place. It's going to be a tight room, but definitely check it out. And if you can't, you'll be able to tune into YouTube and then also just the future and catch that as Pop Smokes and I call all the action. Looking forward to it. I'm sure you are as well too, Pop Smokes. Well, a lot of bad blood in that main event too. There's all four of those guys hate each other quite badly and have had some huge violent matches at PPW in the past. So now they're going to stick all four of them in the ring at the same time. Like, this is going to get nuts, man. And we're going to be right at ringside trying to film this damn thing. It's going to be tense for us, but it's going to be awesome for the crowd. And, uh, boy, they, they get louder and crazier every time. I can't even imagine what they'll be like for a main event like this. You bet. And we're going to about to say, you know, where people can find us here right away, Pop Smokes. But before we do, uh, just so everybody knows, stick around for a little bit. We're going to be raiding our good friend, Heel Kevin. He's got a stream going on. Looks like he might be playing some WWE 2K22. If you want another guy who is high energy like the two of us, Heel Kevin is your man. We're going to be joining him momentarily here on Twitch. And for our people on YouTube, thanks for joining in. Make sure to like and subscribe, and you'll be sticking with us to the end with our outros coming. But before that, Pop Smokes, in the meantime, be in between time. Where can the good people reach out to Pop Smokes? I'm firmly living at Elon Musk land at Smokes underscore Papa and on Twitch at Papa underscore Smokes underscore. And, of course, you can find me on various shows here throughout the week. Beats and Beatdowns on Wednesdays, Thursday nights. It's going to be the doubleheader with myself and Papa Smokes. And, of course, on Sundays with my good brunch buster brother, Chris Parrish, as we bring you Busted Out. And, of course, this Saturday you're going to be able to catch me along with a great panel, including Astro Pizarro and Chris Best, as we give you our review of the Royal Rumble. So make sure to stay into that. We are now going to hit raid and head on over to say, see Hill Kevin. Give him a good O-O-L-E welcome from your good friends, the Video Bros. And if you're with us on YouTube right now, thank you, as always, for tuning in. We hope to see you next Thursday night. Thank you, as always, for the support. We'll see you soon. Take care out there.